Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be going over the tools you as a technician uh, are going to need in your bag. Now I want to say that this is just a list of the ones that I have commonly used and yours are going to be different depending on the specific job duties and functions that you have as well as the, the specific equipment that you have on site. Now I also wanted to preface that the cooler tools you get the more people are going to want to ask to borrow them and the more you're going to want to tell them no because they are going to walk away and never come back. I used to have some pretty cool tools and I ended up buying them a couple different times because again they just don't come back. So as tempting as it is and as courteous as you want to be to your staff and, and other uh, colleagues just kindly let them know that you either need it back within 15 minutes uh, that they can't punch you out without it or take something else as collateral. If they say, hey, can I borrow your, uh, your Fluke uh, multimeter? You can say, yeah, sure, no problem. Can I have your ID? And then maybe uh, they'll be tempted to give it back and at least you'll have something of, uh, of value. So to get started, um, you're gonna wanna carry as few of things as you possibly can in your bag because they're gonna be heavy and it's not fun to lug around uh, a lot of stuff. I'll just be the first one to tell you that you're, you're gonna overpack. It's like going on vacation. How many times do you show up and realize that you didn't end up using 25% of the stuff you brought? Well, the same is gonna be true for you. Start out with a lot and you're gonna start to thin it down. Um, I just realized I forgot something but I didn't have room for it. So we'll put that there. So to go over, I'll just start from the left and I'll work my way down. Now, why do I have two different types of tape measures in here? <laughs> Honestly, I would probably get rid of this one and simply go with as small as a, as a tape measure as possible, simply because of weight. And how often are you gonna be measuring something over 12 feet? It really depends. Um, but it's one of those things that I would go with, I would pack, pack light and, and realize that you're gonna be walking a few miles a day and every, every ounce counts. So I would go with the smallest tape measure as possible. Uh, moving down, you know, these are some of my favorite screwdrivers because what they end up doing is folding on to the, uh, the bits as you're putting on there. So if you're getting into a panel and you need something that uh, isn't gonna drop somewhere, these, these have a, a, a great, great little tool on there. So this is the flathead, or sorry, the, the Phillips and the flathead version. Um, magnetic screwdrivers. Uh, you can get any any brand you like. These just happen to be on sale, which is why I got them. Nothing really special there, but they are very helpful for a lot of different reasons. One, that they, they don't drop the screws, and if you're doing it in a location where you can't afford to you lose that screw, which is exactly why I would use one of these guys. Probably the most handy is the 11-in-1, right? This is a great little screwdriver. They sell replacement bits. Uh, one thing that I've actually lent this out to somebody uh, in the past and I'd seen them uh, take it and then hit it on the end with the hammer. Of course, you know what that does is it shoves everything in there and then kind of renders this screwdriver useless. So another reason to be very cautious on who you lend out your tools to. But this is a great little product. Um, as you can see, I'm already missing a couple bits, uh, but they do sell the replacements, so they are easy to get uh, in the event that you needed to get more. I'll go back up. Um, starting up here, it's a extended lighter, right? The, the reason I like this versus the conventional pocket lighter is that if you're doing fireplaces, maybe some older pilots, uh, this really has a, a much greater reach into where you're going to be going. So it's something that is, is, is much more useful. Of course, it's awkward because of its size, but hard, hard to get around. Uh, this is a door bump, right? Something that you wedge in between a door so that the door can close and you don't wedge something else in there that causes damage to it. It's rubber, uh, you can use it as a slide door stop underneath or you can clip it on one of the hinges. Something that seems to work very well. Speaking of hinges, for those of you who don't know this, I should get a commission for recommending this guy, but the, uh, the Hinge Doctor. The Hinge Doctor is a great little tool um, that I, I keep the instructions near because people who don't know how to use it can end up really causing some serious damage to the door. Um, 
you know, it's one of those things that it really saves you a lot of time from having to adjust certain elements of the door. If you're going onto a heavy door, you realize that maybe it's got tweaked, maybe it is sagging, some of the screws are stripped out. That's where this guy's really gonna come in handy. Uh, wire strippers, you know, these ones are, are obviously tired and it's probably time to retire them. Pretty simple, but uh, you know, get yourself a good pair that's durable, that's gonna last you a long time. Uh, going down, Leatherman. This guy is probably one of, if not the most useful ones I've had. It is the crunch version, which means it's a uh, locking vice grip style, which I really found useful. The other great thing about this tool is <clears throat> when you break a piece off of it, which I've done several times, you mail it back in and they send you back a new one. So this one is probably version three which is great. Uh, I mean, you can see this thing is worn. So, uh, get yourself a little pocket tool. This thing's great, clips onto your belts. When you're not lugging around your bag, you really get a lot of versatility out of it. Moving up, uh, you're gonna wanna carry a pen and a pencil and then a notebook as well. So get one of those little pocket-sized notebooks, really is gonna help you a lot. You know, you're gonna get a lot of calls, be pulled a lot of different directions and making sure that you remember them is key. The you have to remember that the, the uh, dullest pencil is still sharper than the faintest memory, right? So a short pencil better than a long memory, however you want to call it. Uh, next, a lot of people like knives and real tricky, fancy, flashy things. Well, I can tell you that a simple razor does the job. It's easy to deploy. They now come with, uh, this is an older one, but they now come with something in the, the back that allows you to store additional razors. Razors are inexpensive, they're super sharp. Um, you don't have to worry about breaking a nice $100 uh, knife, knife blade and be upset about it. Uh, I'll move on to lights. So headlamps, headlamps, very helpful, right? I mean, how many times do you, do you need both your hands when you're working in an environment? You're gonna be a lot under sinks, uh, in areas that have low overhang and clearance. Um, but for those that uh, do, where you can free up both your hands, I mean, you can get a light that will clip on um, to, your, to your hat and something else, but get yourself, invest in a really nice quality light. Now, I would say that you wanna go with something that's a double A. These take the C123s, which mean that they're a little bit more robust and brighter. However, uh, it's a little more difficult to uh, find batteries from them. There's a couple different types of hexes that you can get. You can get the, uh, the metric or the imperial version. You're gonna wanna get both. These ones are a little bit more elongated than the others, and I find that you know, in certain, you might need a couple different styles. Uh, certain situations, these are great because the length of them will get into those awkward spots and the shorter ones make it easier to turn depending on what you're doing. Moving on to pliers. So there's a couple different styles. Uh, this just happened to be one that somebody gave me in just a vice grip, which, you know, it's, it's a little more unique, but found it helpful. And then you're gonna wanna find uh, some smaller vice grips that fit in your bag. These are pretty lightweight. Uh, they do make a smaller version of it, but I found that, you know, it can be really hard to get some leverage on and squeeze. So these ones have always worked relatively well for me. But again, they do make smaller ones that you could find useful. Uh, and you're gonna wanna get yourself a nice pair of snips. Uh, I've broke off a lot of these teeth on several different things. Always comes in handy. Uh, you know, as much as some of the screwdriver, or sorry, as much as you want to try and cut it with razors and everything else, uh, there's really no substitute for this. Moving on to electrical. Um, you can always find yourself a little electrical tester, a little stinger, something that they, they work well most of the time. Um, I always prefer a meter but these are always a simple way that, let's say you wanna trace out a power cord or just get a, a visual for something. I found that people will often disbelieve you if you take a meter and you stick it into the socket and it shows 120 volts, they don't really know what they're reading. But if you can have some sort of audible alert that you're saying, hey, sir or ma'am, I wanna let you know that your outlet is working, this confirmed it, right? It's something kind of sends an auditory message and as well as a visual light up that, that people tend to like. Uh, get yourself uh, a little uh, outlet checker, right? This is obviously something that can uh, test GFIs and it will also give you kind of the polarity of it too. So 
uh, something that is, is lightweight, it's simple, stick it in there, it tells you whether a plug has, you know, correct polarity or if it's an open, open hot, open neutral, whatever the case might be. And then finally, uh, get yourself a, a decent meter. Uh, this is a Fluke. Now, there are so many different meters out there and again, I have three or four different ones, all for three or four different applications, but the reason I like this one is because it's simple, you don't have to turn on any settings, you don't have to fuddle with anything, it turns itself on, turns itself off, um, simply go in, you know, it says okay I have continuity, you can quickly check uh, whatever it is, it doesn't obviously display uh, a whole lot, but it will give you resistance, it will test GFIs, and then it gives you a voltage count from uh, 12 to 600. So it's not gonna, not gonna give you a lot, but for what this was used for, um, very, very helpful, very utilitarian. Again, remember, keep your, your bag light. If you get cool tools, people are gonna wanna borrow them. So make sure that if you do borrow them, take something as a contingency from them and, and ensure that they're gonna bring it back. But as you're starting as a tech, these are uh, a great starting point for you. You're gonna wanna overbuy. Uh, honestly, if you go to the store uh, and you buy some of those kits, you might be overpaying uh, for a few things, but they're generally gonna have everything you need. And I realize this just fell on the floor. But lastly, PPE. Uh, the one thing I didn't include were the glasses and the gloves, right? Nobody uh, thinks about little things such as a little piece of screw, a little piece of metal coming off, hitting you in the eye. Uh, something that you know, getting in your hands that then you then rub in your eye. Well, I can tell you that I've I've personally uh, had to take people to the clinic for everything from a splash of CLR to metal shavings in their eyes, and a simple pair of uh, PPE glasses would have absolutely curbed that. Now, they're scratched. They kind of look goofy, but they do sell cooler ones. Don't worry about it. You know you're looking to protect to, to protect yourself and make sure that you want to keep your vision as long as you possibly can, uh, as well as every other extremity you have. So it's it's worth the investment. And nowadays most organizations will provide that for you at no cost. So ask for it, get it, wear it. But going back to it, I think that uh, this this covers it. So if you're you're getting into this trade, don't overbuy. And what I was going to say is that. Uh, a lot of times these places, these outfits such as Granger, perhaps uh, Home Depot or some electrical wholesales, they'll, they'll sell you a kit and generally it's a little overpriced. It's going to come with things that uh, you're likely not going to use often, uh, but it will give you the majority of what you need. Um, again, it's going to be tailored to your specific property and whatever facility you have going, but I hope this was helpful.